So here I'm going to show the, the ultimate beginner's guide to playing Cyberpunk. You only have one operating system operational at a time, so you can either choose to be a Netrunner or to use Sandivistan. And the perks and the attributes that you're going to put into the, bot, into the skill tree are going to be completely different for each. There are going to be things that are beneficial to both systems. It's going to be money, weapons, cyberware, health, armor, and skill tree perks. So you're going to start off picking which tribe you want to belong to. And it doesn't matter. Each of the three different choices all have the same attributes. So you're going to make your character. And if you like to play with a challenge, then you play on very hard. If it's the first time you're playing the game, pick easy. So for a Netrunner build, it's 6 in Intelligence, 6 in Tech, and 4 in Cool. So here my character is at uh, 6 level and 12 street cred, which is what it takes to get the certain things open up at 12 street cred. So I'm going to put a point into Cold Blood because you don't start getting uh, progression rewards, which is in the lower left, and you get bonuses if you don't have a point into Cold Blood. All the other things, you get bonuses just by using them. I keep upgrading intelligence, and at 9 intelligence, there are cyberware components that you can put in that buff up your abilities. In addition to that, I put almost all my points into quick hacking, and the ones that I don't put points into are shown. In addition, in the beginning, when you first start out, quick hacking doesn't do any damage at all, hardly. It's way worse than guns, but you just keep doing it a little bit, and if nothing else, it softens them up so the guns are more effective. So doing stealth gameplay is doing rear takedowns and not getting into combat. As soon as you fire guns and they start shooting at you, you're in combat. In combat, you can't craft bullets, you can't do the things that you can do when you're not in combat. So here's the using a rear distraction by distracting him with the fan. He'll, get, he'll notice the fan and not notice you. You come up behind him and do a takedown, and with three in body, you can take down anybody in Watson. So when you open your map, you can see all of Watson's missions and stuff, but if you set the filter to custom, you can highlight and un uncheck things that you want to look at. So I don't want to look at the exploration, the purchase vehicles, the apartments, the terreau, whatever. So I just want to see the missions, and if you, start, if you don't start doing the Regina Jones fixer missions, then she won't give you any more. It used to be they'd give you all of them right at the beginning. But now they dole them out little by little, so you have to complete them to get more missions. So the way I play the Netrunner is different from the Sandivistan. I f finish all of the NCPD missions and all the Regina Jones missions by the time I do Compeki Plaza and leave Watson. Because I can get up to 30 street cred, which allows me to get an epic cyber deck and buy epic quick hacks from the Netrunner. This makes me much more powerful and I can get through Compeki no problem either doing just takedowns from the rear or setting them on fire with overheat. And I can get through Compeki without ever entering into combat. So because I'm doing quick hacking, I can soften up enemies so that a lot of their health is lost before I shoot them and they go down really quickly. And they never find out where I'm at because by the time three quarters of their health is gone, it only takes a couple of bullets out of my silent psalm to kill them and they don't get alerted to where I'm at. I buy the Crusher shotgun crafting spec for the green one at the gun stores at level 3, so I can just keep on crafting them all the time, and when the level goes up and I need more power from it, I just craft another one. The green Nakamata crafting spec is given to you at the beginning of the game. So you always want to buy crafting specs from the gun store for guns and from the clothing stores for clothing because it's much easier to just recraft stuff, especially clothing, because upgrading clothing doesn't work at all, hardly. Whereas upgrading guns is pretty easy, except that after about five upgrades, the components get to be horribly expensive. This is going to be an example of doing the Nakamata and the Crusher on an NCPD mission. You always want to check your inventory before you get involved in a shootout, because once you're in combat, you're no longer able to craft bullets, and running out of bullets is a game changer for you. <laughs> so anyway, there's things you can't do when you're in combat, so you do it before you get into combat. So the Nakamata can shoot through concrete walls and steel, and then notice if you outline people and you line up your shots, you got a 300% headshot bonus, and it's pretty strong at taking out people. I mean, 
just really strong, and you're nice and safe from your, their bullets because they don't shoot back at you like this. Even when they have the Nekromedas, they don't tend to shoot through the wall much at you. The power of the Crusher shotgun, as you notice, it knocks people backwards and they can't really shoot at you while they're down on the ground. And you'll notice we're going to get the blue Hackslinger mod, which is great for quick hacking. It can only go on blue or higher clothing, however. Now I'm going to show you the location of where you can pick up the buzz saw. It's a pulsar that can shoot through concrete, and it's at the location I'm showing here. And I wait till level 4 to go do it, and I just go around and do some NCPD missions that don't have any high or very high next to them. So the Psalm and the buzz saw and a lot of other guns are rare iconics, and they have some special features. The Psalm has an 18% chance in the rare version of catching people on fire and the buzzsaw can shoot through concrete. In order to get the NCPD mission, you have to do the buzzsaw mission first, where the guy drops the psalm. If you don't see the gold uh, X over his body, I restart it so I get it. And I can get it at level 5. The psalm sets guys on fire in addition to doing damage. It's my favorite. So here I'm winding up Watson. You can tell I'm doing the All Foods mission, just starting it, and I'm at level 15, street cred 30, and I have the epic cyber deck and epic quick hacks. I'm showing you all the perks I have in the quick hacking, and I'm also up to level 12 in technical so I can craft epic weapons at this point. So your clothing gives you armor along with the intergumentary uh, cyberware, and you can get armor at the clothing stores and I always buy crafting specs and all the mods they sell because they're pretty cheap and then you can craft clothing every time you level up a couple because it's only costing you components it's well worth it next up is your health your health is determined by how high your level in your body is because the higher your body is the more health you're gonna have but you can also get boosters in cyberware and in perk points that give you extra health. Well, the next thing I'm going to show is the money it. replication glitch. You can do it at any vendor or Dropbox. doesn't always work for me, but it does work most of the time. So you take the number, you deplete it by one, hold the cursor over the item you're selling, and then hit the F again to sell them. And now when it gets that buyback over it, you can buy it back twice. So you basically are getting almost twice the components and the vendor doesn't goes back to having the same money and you go back to having the same money except that you have double the supplies now and you can sell them. If you use your scanner when you're going down the streets you can look at boxes and every single box has the opportunity of having crafting specs in it. So you want clothing and gun mod crafting specs and I'm just showing you the pathway to find pretty much a guaranteed uh, crafting spec box of something. It's not always going to be the same thing, but there will be some crafting specs in the box here. This is in Kabuki Slums area. So now we're going to look at building a Sandavistan build. You're going to have four in body, three in intelligence, five in reflexes, five in tech, and five in cool. In the early game, I will put perks into intelligence as much as possible. But later, I'll just pay to have them redistributed and put them where I want them. To get the first Sandy, you need 14 street cred. So wherever that's going to come for you, then you can get the green version, which is crap. So I'm using a katana, and I toss the flash grenade out, and the synaptic accelerator gives me a little two-second slow time. And then you can see when I turn the Sandy on, it slows time for a while, eight seconds. And then I'm back to using guns because the little running man on the right side there at the upper next to my health bar shows that it's taking a, quite a while to come down. So I'm going to have to revert to guns to finish them off. So now we're at level 11 instead of level 7. And we have some points into reflexes for the blades, which improves it. And we have some points into cool, which improves it. We're not using the katana anymore. We're using the mono wire. It's only the rare one, which is not as good as the epic one, but this th you'll see the difference. This is the same location that I just showed you with the green one. The mono wire is so powerful because it can hit three guys that are close enough to you at the same time. The negative part is that it'll blow you up by hitting gas tanks and, and uh, civilians. But you get if they're close enough together, it'll just hit them all. 
and when they get hit they get stunned and they can't shoot back so the mono wire is vastly superior in my opinion eight seconds everyone's dead since you can't turn off the cameras with uh, cyber deck anymore the cameras gonna notice you and then the enemies are gonna go aggro and start shooting at you and since they don't have a feature where you can throw a rock or something if you shoot the camera that disables it and if you shoot at a car or something near the enemy they'll go over and take a look and see what it is so that's your kind of distraction feature with the Santa Vista. So at 12 in reflexes, I can get the epic Dynalar Mark III Sanda Vistan at the pump station uh, ripper in Lower West Haywood. This thing works great. It's got a 15 second cooldown and a 16 second on time. It has two mod slots and I have the green, the lowest quality heat sinks that give me two and a half second cooldown reduction each, so I get a five second cooldown reduction, which means my cooldown is 10 seconds. You notice the mono wire hits multiple people at the same time, and when it hits them, they get kind of stunned and can't hit back. So I'm just trying to control all of these guys by hitting them over and over again. Because they're very high, they need to get hit over and over again. If you look at the little yellow stamina line, it's depleted after doing that, so stamina is going to be a big issue. If you need more stamina, you're going to have to take all the boosts and perks that you can get that give you more stamina, like in body. But you can also take a stamina booster that gives you 50% higher stamina to begin with for 30 minutes. So take it and go to work. I also have the epic monowire with the 50% bonus damage uh, battery, high battery, from the Ripper in Pacifica. The next thing you'll notice is not all Red Skulls are the same difficulty. There are Red Skulls in downtown that you'll have to get up to like level 35 before they stop being Red Skulls, like the seventh hell. But other Red Skulls will stop being le Red Skulls at like level 22. There are about 10 locations in the world where you can get free perk points. Here I'm showing one that's in Watson, so you could get this pretty early on. Once you get outside of Watson, there's a bunch of them around. You can watch videos on where they are. Having extra perk points is going to make a big difference. Next up, there's a ton of cheaty ways to do this game. If you look around, use your double jump legs to go up on the roof. There's windows you can open up on the top of the roof to get in. You don't have to go through the front door. And this is just one of them where you can just go up to the back of the building, jump up, open the window, climb in, do a distraction on the camera, take the girl that's in there out, grab the data off the computer and jump out, and the gig's over. And since I'm at level 4, I don't have the psalm and I don't have the buzzsaw yet, but I can still do this mission without anything special. There are a lot of skylights on rooftops that you can open if you have high enough technical. You open the thing, drop in, and avoid going through the front door and interacting with all the people inside the place. Here we have the rare synaptic signal optimizer. It gives you 40% extra health, but you can get the white one that gives you 20% extra health at level 3, but you need level 12 in body to get 40%. So here I am at level 23 doing Padre's bus station mission, and it's very high difficulty, and these guys are Red Skulls, and you can tell by how many hits it takes to kill them how high level they are. If it only takes two hits to kill them, they're not that high level. But if it takes 10, 12 hits to kill them, they're high level. So I'm showing the perks and attributes investments that I have at level 23 here. And level 23 is really low, actually, for doing uh, Red Skull guys. And if you count the amount of hits that it takes here. So I run off and hide so I don't get hit because two hits and I'm dead. You can see here I'm going to get hit once and my health goes halfway down just with one hit. And here, since they're grouped together, I got three guys and the monowire is hitting all three of them at the same time. This is ideal for the monowire because I'm going to kill all three of these guys. And to be honest, I died a couple of times because I got shot without being behind cover and whatnot. And this is at level 23, this build finished this mission off at extremely high difficulty level. 
So if you like to play more stealthy, then the Netrunner's better build for you. If you like the combat and OP annihilation, then the Monowire and Sandy is a better build for you.